going back to like the conversations about even, you know, <laughs> the try it before you buy it stuff. Like you can't do these type of things because marriage is God's. Yeah. We don't want to say that, but I'll say yeah. it. Marriage is God's. Yeah. You can't do that with an alternative motive. You can't. You can't, can't. You can't even. You can't even build your marriage on sex, mm. especially if you had mm. a lot of it before you got married. Yeah, you gonna need deliverance from that. Ain't no deliverance ministry and that's the from thing. your sexual. Just like, just you know like as you talked about, like with the with the um the nephilim and the and the, and the daughters of of men and the son and the the fallen angels. Mm-hmm. How did how, how did those babies come through? Through sex. Mm. <laughs> so I mean, we can have a oh, we go yeah. deep and be like, oh well, it's a start of sexual demon possession through that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't realize this, but who you have sex with. It matters. Yeah. You don't know what spirits are being exchanged yeah. in that moment. You don't know that person's full background, especially if you hooking up, and hook up culture thing. and things like that. People think like, oh, well, and you, and you that's not Christian how it works or, or this right. and that. Why wouldn't he attack that? It's God. It's God's. It's God's gift. He's been, he's been attacking God's plan since Genesis, since Facts. God created Adam and Facts. Eve. Facts. And you think he wouldn't use that? Right. Why couldn't the demons just come down, the fallen angels just come down and possess people? But instead, they went and had sex with them. Mm -hmm. And reproduce. And reproduce. I'm like, this stuff stuff gets wild when you think about it. It's deep. It goes deep. And that's why I was like, you know, I know we can definitely go deep, 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 deep. Oh, we not? Oh. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying like, <laughs> but I mean, but that's the thing. It's like, you know, sexual, I feel like honestly, any type of premarital sex, mm-hmm. you know, opens the doors for, for that realm to happen. They say the same thing about alcohol. Too. Yeah. Like alcohol. Because alcohols are spirits. Mm-hmm. They even call it that. Like. Mm-hmm. They say they say it on the advertisement. It's spirits. Mm. Now I'm not saying you can't drink at all, but it's like alcohol. Mm, maybe it is dancing with fire a little bit. Yeah, I don't know because then people, you know, I'm one of those people who are like Jesus drank. So I mean, I, mean, I think there's a moderation or yeah, a, there's, there's there's a, a gu- there's a it. guideline to it. There's you know? a guideline to it. I mean, um, that's but what the Bible says if you think about it, it's just like well, I mean. Am I flirting with disaster? Mm-hmm. Am I tempting myself to mm-hmm. go somewhere deeper? Mm-hmm. Am I tempting myself to open those type of things up? My wife got that way. She was very sensitive about it, uh, about things of that nature, like of the spiritual nature, because she grew up watching horror movies, like mm-hmm. as a child, which I'm like, whoa, okay, that's a lot. That's different. Um, but now as an adult, as a believer, she's very sensitive to what we watch. Mm. I remember I was watching... So on Netflix, they have this cartoon series based off of Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. It got to a point where she was just like, I can't keep watching. Yeah. She's just like, this is just too, it's too much. It's too triggering. Yeah. And at first, I was looking at her kind of annoyed because I was into it and I wanted to keep going. But, I, you know, she was like, well, you can keep watching. I'm just going to go to sleep. And I was thinking about it, though. Like, I'm glad the Lord put it on my heart to even think this way because I'm selfish otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, y- y'all hear that? I'm selfish without the Holy Spirit. Okay, you hear that, wife? He admitted, "I'm selfish without selfish. the Holy Spirit." You are too. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Not not talking to my wife. I'm saying to whoever's yeah, he's judging to, me on yeah. the other side. Yeah, clean it up. TJ, clean it up. Don't, clean don't, it up. Don't, don't, uh, don't, uh, <laughs> we got lawyers. It's getting a little hot in here. Uh, <laughs> nah. Um, no, nah, I was thinking about you know watching it. While she was asleep and just being like, you know, but I, it hit me where I was like, if something about this is making her uncomfortable, for one, why would I indulge it further? Yeah. If I really do believe that she's she's a child of God filled with his spirit and maybe she's discerning something that even I'm not catching because I'm enthralled by entertainment. That's a whole nother podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, I was like, do I really think just because she went to sleep that this won't affect her? Mm. It's like she can hear it. Mm hmm. And it's playing in her subconscious. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I never finished. Mm-hmm. To this day, I still haven't finished mm-hmm. the series. 
And I'm like, yeah, I think some of that stuff that I thought was my mom being, you know, Pentecostal holiness, OD. Yeah. You you don't really understand until you get older. It's not even the stuff you have to experience to know. It's just now I think I actually believe the realm of possibility or potential that this could go to. Mm. And this isn't me trying to sound super deep or super spiritual, like, oh, listen to me, whatever, whatever mysterious. No, man. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> am I willing to risk yeah. just to have what I want? Mm. Am I willing to compromise? Yeah. People are like, yeah, it's not hurting anybody. I'm not willing to risk it. Yeah. But that's the that's facts. I mean, that's Halloween in general to me. That, that's why we don't celebrate it. I mean, I know a it's lot of people much. who do, and this was the first year I celebrated it. Mm -hmm. You know what I did? Why? I celebrated Halloween by setting up my little tent outside my garage, mm -hmm. a little table with some goodie bags <laughs> that had scripture inside of them. Come on. And every little child that, that came with an adult, <laughs> I asked them if we could pray for them. That's good. And for the longest time, I was just like, I realized I was scared. I was more scared of Halloween than I was, like, mm -hmm. actually trying to make a difference. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, oh, Halloween's evil, so I'm just going to avoid it, avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Turn off all the lights. Pretend no That's one's home. Bar. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was more fearful about it than I was actually trying to, like, make a difference within it, be a light in the darkness like he called us to do. Mm. And I don't think a light in the darkness necessarily, and there's no shade to anyone, do let the Holy Spirit lead you and convict you. If it sounds true, if I stepped on your toes, then maybe your shoe size is mine. But <laughs> just if <laughs> I don't think the way to be a light necessarily in the darkness is to say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to just – I'm going to just be there. And like, yeah. it's not, I'm just absorb the good parts or the yeah. parts that aren't so bad. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how about I just be overtly Jesus-y mm. just to be safe? Yeah. Let me just be overtly Jesus-y. Yeah. Our neighbors were actually giving us a hard time about it. Cause, really? Yeah. It's a whole conversation. I won't air it all out. But when Are they, they saw, saved? No. Not no, that. Well, sense. they said yes. I don't think so, in my opinion. They said yes, but they're not. They haven't confessed it in their heart. I don't know him well enough to know that. Okay. Um, the, the, there's more details I can get into with that. It's, there's been an interesting relationship dynamic there, um, which they're chill. Aside from this one moment, they've been chill, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that because not everyone has chill neighbors, right? Yeah. Um, that and we've been trying to get into the neighborhood and know people and try to, like, share the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember them kind of giving – uh, us a hard time because they were like, see, you do celebrate Halloween because we had told them we didn't. Mm -hmm. they called us narrow-minded. Oh. And uh, so they, were like, see, you you, they were like, see, you did celebrate it. Don't you love that? And I'm like, <laughs> to me, the comparison and contrast was crazy. For yeah. one, our house ain't had nothing dark about it. <laughs> like, the light was on in the garage. Uh -huh. We outside under a bright orange tent with a fall leaf covered table, mm -hmm. you know, like whatever, with candy bags that... Mm -hmm have scripture in it mm -hmm. cut up and put on, you know, colorful pieces of paper, right? Like, compared to them, they had all the music, mm -hmm. all the Monster Mash music and, mm -hmm. and Horror House music playing, yeah. and they were all costumed up and everything. Like, it was a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm just saying? Like, mm -hmm. I think just being a little extra Jesus-y to be on the safe side of this book mm -hmm. sometimes isn't bad. Like, that's how we engage with culture, I feel like. Yeah. And, preserve ourselves, even if nothing was going to happen. I'm not saying everyone who decided to do Halloween or somebody who decides to watch this stuff, they're going to hell or they're getting demon-possessed or stuff like that. I'm not that person to say absolutely without a shadow of a doubt that's what's happening. I am. <laughs> that's what we're here for. I mean, that's, what we're, <laughs> that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I will. <laughs> But I will. You're going to hell if you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But oh. I do say that there's a bigger realm of possibility that is what, like they can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> that you could damn yourself. Like uh, yeah, in, in way. yeah. You, damn You're yourself right. doesn't just mean hell. Yeah. Like you could mess around and mess with yourself here. Yeah. 
you can mess around and mess up your kids. You can. You know, it's just like the realm of possibilities is larger as an adult, I feel like, than when I was a child. Yeah. And as a believer, I can't read this stuff and be like, oh, yeah, that that only happened back then, but mm-hmm. now I'm safe. Yeah. Yeah. This can't happen to me. A demon can't jump on me through a possessed man and beat me up because I'm trying to out here wield something I know nothing about. Right. Boy, I wish I, ooh, I could get into a whole mm-hmm. thing. What if in some of our churches in America that are full of all these nominal Christians, mm. what what if a demon did pull up and say, what's good? And people say, oh, yeah, well, we're just going to, I don't know what they tell them to do. They wouldn't know what to do. They get they their, wouldn't know what to do. They'd be like, they would get their at money, money beat. <laughs> They would straight up <laughs> in the physical and the spiritual, yeah. honestly. Yeah. They would get beat. They'd lose. Yeah. But you know what? The enemy doesn't even have to stoop to that level. He's already got his beat on pornography, mm. gluttony, pride, mm-hmm. hatred, mm-hmm. stealing. Yeah. Just because we're not Aladdin in the market taking apples from vendors doesn't mean we don't steal. Mm. Tax. I just watched that. Last Taxes. Night. Mm-hmm. And businesses, whether you know, do a little embezzling here and there, it'll just cut corner. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I know it's yeah. not hard to get into that. It's not. You're right. It's almost easier to go up to the corner store and just grab a payday. I remember stealing candy bars. You remember those days? The days when things used to be simple. <laughs> am I still like liable for this stuff? Like, <laughs> I shouldn't admit so much. You admit a lot. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't admit so much. <laughs> I remember going in the store back in the day. Back in the day, stealing candy bars. <laughs> Open the soda, walk around the store, drink it, put the empty thing back, back in, in the fridge, walk on that. and walk out. <laughs> don't do that, kids. <laughs> stay Please in school. Don't. Please, don't. Please don't. Please stay. Please. Please stay safe. But um, I mean, but I mean, to your point, everything that you're saying, like, mm-hmm. I, I think of it like this, too, because like, even as Christian men, as Christian fathers, and even as Christian husbands, mm-hmm. um, because I think, too, a lot of things that people don't understand, or I would say that men, Christian men, um, don't really understand. I won't generalize and put us all into that same category. I would say newly saved Christian men don't understand their role as the priest of their household mm-hmm. because you allow what comes into your house and you allow what you don't, what don't, and what your children are exposed to, what your wife are exposed to. Mm-hmm. And so, like, for you to have that wisdom to mm-hmm. be like, okay. I'm not going to watch it. I, you know, it, she's still listening to it. It's still being played subconsciously in her mind. It's like you have to cover that. You have to protect that mm-hmm. because, like, there's times like you don't even we don't even think. You know, we, we're men. We're stupid. We don't even think about those things all the time. Yeah. But you know, praise God for a helpmate, right? Thank God. But it's like you know, we have to be mindful of those things. Of okay, I can't watch this show. I can't watch that. I can't listen to this. I can't listen to that mm-hmm. because. The influence piece. That's going to influence my family in a negative way. Mm-hmm. That's going to influence my children. That's going to influence my wife. Mm-hmm. That's going to it's going to influence me. And now I got this spirit in this house. Mm. Nobody's listening to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the spirit is kicking my butt, and and I don't have no power to pray it out or anything like that. Like it's it's that type of stuff. So like. You have to be mindful of what you're allowing in your household, what you're, yeah. what you are, um, saying yes to, mm-hmm. even what you're saying no to, right? Because there's yeah. people that say there's men that won't that won't go to church. There are men that'll say no to mm-hmm. listening to you know to, to to sermons and things like that, like you, or praying together, or praying together, yeah. like because they're they're scared to pray in front of their wife, which is mm-hmm. the trick of the enemy, you know. You have to be very mindful. Oh, so things. many tricks. I was thinking about a personal one. Yeah, I am airing a whole lot out, but I actually don't really care as much. It's it's good. Um, I think about like how my wife prays with our kids before they go to sleep. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I don't mm. because it feels like it's a mommy thing. Like mm-hmm. they look to mommy for it, mm. you know. Or especially like the young ones when they don't reciprocate that sort of like I want you ness. Yeah. It gets easy for me to just be like, I right, that's cool. I just you know but at least they're covered, you know. Yeah. You know, wifey's got them. Yeah. Instead of me just kinda like you said, 
recognizing that as the priest in my home, like, it's not saying my wife can't pray or that her prayers aren't sufficient, but it's like, well, why can't I join in? Yeah. Why can't I stake myself in that moment and say, no, I'm going to cover y'all too. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like being that proactive versus being complacent mm. or easily dissuaded. Mm. That's one thing, boy. Men, we, we are easily dissuaded, man. We are. Like, yeah, I was, I just, honestly, that just hit me as we were talking about this. I was like, man, I need to stop doing that. No, it hit me, it, it hit me the other day because, <laughs> you know, like as men, as parents, you can be so busy doing a whole bunch of stuff and thinking, mm-hmm. you got a whole bunch of stuff on your mind. Then you're killing <clears throat> it. Yeah, and then your children ask you a question and it irritates you, you get on your nerves, you're like, what? Because <laughs> it literally happened to me the other day. It was like, I was just, you know, in my own little in my own little zone, and then my daughter asked me. She was like, um, "Daddy, what does Jesus? Who? Like, what is Jesus about?" And I was just, "No." She said, "Did Jesus? Why, why did Jesus die for our sins?" And I just sat there, and I was like, "I mean, I gave her a quick answer, but it, then when I gave her the answer, I I felt convicted in the moment because it was like, mm-hmm. that's your opportunity mm-hmm. to talk about God mm-hmm. to your to your child." It's like, did Christ or did God do that same thing to us when we go to him and say, God, I need help with X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Did he just bl- brush us off because he got other people to deal with? Yeah. It's like, no. It's like, he answers us. He he responds to us. And I think, like, you know, even as men, like, we, we <laughs> I know they got real deep and real, mm. <laughs> real pointed. Nah, it's good. <laughs> but it's, it's good. like, you know, but at the same time, it's like, you we have to be the priests in our homes to be able to answer those questions, to pray with our children, to read the Bible and cover our children. Like me and my wife, we, we pray with our, our children every, um, at the top, at the start of the week, we'll do a family prayer. Um, I'll pray one week, the next week my wife will pray. Um, and so, and just recently I started like actually praying specifically for my children mm-hmm. in this prayer, because usually I would just, you know, do a, we will all pray and then I would have them, you know, pray, you do the uh, Lord's prayer. Um, and then I would just pray for uh, whatever. But it was like the Lord, you know, kind of showed me. It was like, this is your moment to really, mm-hmm. like, cover your children, yeah. cover your wife, cover your family. Pray specific things over them mm-hmm. that they hear you saying, that they hear come out of your mouth as, oh, my dad is praying for this. He knows I'm struggling in school with math. He's praying for me to be better in math. Like they hear those things and that kind of shapes, you know, their, yeah. their mindset and it shapes the trajectory of like, okay, mm-hmm. how they approach things. Or even just building a core memory that you don't yeah. know if it's going to That you don't even know. Yeah. yeah. Because then, cause like at, when they get older, they'll be like, I remember like when you prayed for me, mm-hmm. or when you prayed specifically for me mm-hmm. for this, you prayed for me to be a leader. And you know, these, these things that we take for granted and we just be praying yeah. and just saying, but at the same time, it's like, these are things that if we don't say these words or we don't, pray these things over our children, then we 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 would allow the tablets or YouTube mm-hmm. to influence them and to do those things. Yeah. If we don't, and then next thing you know, they they go into a concert and being more influenced by the secular world mm-hmm. than they are with their own Christian parents in their own home. Yeah. And that's why I think, like, uh, that's funny how we got here, but (laughs) it still ties back to like we were saying with deliverance ministry, deliverance ministry and all ministry starts at home. It do. It's got to start at home. So if it's not happening at home, it doesn't need to happen in front of a camera. It doesn't need to happen from a stage. It doesn't need to happen in front of a crowd. I think that's what was so cool about that. Both the moments that you described dealing with like demon possession, (laughs) if I'm allowed to say cool about those Type of situations, right? Demon possession is cool. <laughs> what? That's not what I was I going for. But I heard it like as I came, I was like, "It's cool, everybody." <laughs> that's kind of not it. That's, but that's not the uh, point you was making, <laughs> right? But no, it's just like it was. It was a, the first time was a family, like y'all handled it as a family, mm-hmm. or your family handled it mm-hmm. together as a family. Mm-hmm. You know, which is a sign of unity. Strong. It's home. Yeah. This is happening at home. And it's like, okay, 
we're not just going to say, oh, there's always one. Mm-hmm. Every family reunion, family mm-hmm. event. There's a, no, 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 it's no, no. crazy, Terry, though, no God. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's like saying, no, we're going to actually, we're, gonna this we're taking family. this to Jesus yeah. right now. We don't even know what's going on, but mm-hmm. we no matter. This is coming out. This mm-hmm. is getting out. You know, um, then the other instance with you in college, you know, the difference between that and what I see a lot in deliverance ministry uh, I won't even get into people who charge for deliverance ministry. Oh, if you're a minister and you charge for something, I don't know, man. I don't know how to feel. Like you I'm, I, that's that's kind of how I've been ending a lot of things. I have a lot of feelings, but mm-hmm. I just I'll put my little cap phrase. I don't know how to feel, um, and just leave it at that. You know, I think when it starts to become something that's like, look at me and not look at Jesus. Yeah, because why did Jesus even do that stuff, man? Mm. He didn't have to. To the demon's point, no, 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 it's not time. Mm. It's not time for us to go into the abyss yet. Mm. Why he do it? Send us to the pigs. Yeah, why he do it? He did it because he loves us. Mm. And he did it to, so that we might believe. So if your deliverance ministry, whatever that looks like, whatever you believe about it, doesn't point people to Jesus, it doesn't cause faith to rise and grow amongst believers, then it is kind of just a moot point. I didn't know people had to throw up in order to be delivered. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's anywhere in the Bible. I think that's just something that's... That's just a reaction. Yeah, it's just one of the main it. ways. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But now I've noticed people will try to coax people to throw up. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's an emotional, like you're trying to mm-hmm. get something Out, from them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To like validate. Like now I'm looking for the vomit more than I'm mm-hmm. looking for... Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Actual change. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like baptism, where it's like, oh, we say baptism doesn't save you, baptism doesn't change you, then how come our goals and our metrics are built around how many people clicked a button, raised their hand, and mm. got baptized? Yeah. Are they disciples? Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Because if they're disciples, guess what the metrics are going to show up? Hmm. They're going to show up through change yeah. happening throughout your whole community or city. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you won't be able to metric it. Yeah. And not just change as far as, oh, they're coming to my church. Not behavioral modification either. <laughs> just, just yeah. I'm, I'm more into the change of that person's heart. Mm-hmm. And if they are actually now truly following Christ. Yeah. Because anybody can say they follow Christ. Yeah. But are you truly walking with God? How's your prayer life? Like, mm-hmm. how are you studying the word? Like, if I say a scripture, do you finish it before I even start saying it? Like, yeah. like it, like. Those things. Are and you I, are you a disciple who makes disciples? Right. And I think that, in a lot of sense, I think that is what deliverance ministries and a lot of churches are missing. It's like we, we can get so caught up on the numbers mm-hmm. that we don't really focus on, and I want to make this a, generali- a generalization of all churches, but most churches don't really focus on really truly making disciples. Like, what does that mean to make mm-hmm. disciples? That means that you're sending these people out <laughs> to carry the gospel and to spread the gospel, mm-hmm. not sending them out for them to come to our church on Sunday mornings to fill up the seats. No, we're sending people out so that they can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. They can share their testimony and they can share what God has done in their lives. Pray with people, lead people to Christ. And yeah. then walk with them, build a community, mm-hmm. could allow them to continue to walk. Or if they have questions, come and ask whatever your questions you have. Like, you know, so in the perfect much. utopia. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much I want to say. But that's, but uh, to me, honestly, that's my idea of church. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're impacting a community, mm-hmm. it's like we should be impacting a community to where we're sending people out from our church out into that community to influence that community to be better. 